All right, what's up everyone? This is Ergo Josh. I'm Ergo Josh and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I've got a technique, a special secret skill that they didn't want you to know about, right? I had to isolate myself in the deserts of the Sahara just to get this information to you, all right? I am going to reveal a technique that if you want to paint realistic shading of any type, you want to paint like the cool oil painters that inspired me to make my masterpiece on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, this is it. I want you to get hype. We are dealing with the basic concept of... Uh, let's try this one more time. We are dealing with the basic concept of holes. Uh, that, that wasn't really a very dramatic color. So we are dealing with the basic concept of holes. What you want to do, what I'm suggesting that you do, you don't have to do anything, but I suggest that if you're struggling with shading when you're doing digital art, try to think about it like how a dry media traditional artist thinks about it. You can't just paint the color you want. You have to slowly etch away at what you are putting onto the canvas one of my favorite examples is just a pencil, but also second place would be charcoal. So if I go down to the charcoal brushes, you know, like this is, especially when you're using vine charcoal, you gotta really slowly work at it. You, you do too much, then you gotta erase it. You wanna get there perfectly, but it's super hard to do that, right? Can't really ever hit perfect. But if you go slow enough, then you can just stop when you get close enough, right? And so that's what I'm talking about. I've created a series of brushes that allow you to use the concept of what's happening here. If you are if you have a keen eye, you will see why this is unique, is that basically there are holes. There are preparations where you can come back with a different color, different hue, different value, and you can paint and get a new color that is completely dependent on where you're painting it and some areas change colors as you go along and so that really helps you get that nice color variation that makes your artwork pop and can inspire you to what else you can even get some new color ideas from what you were doing there and so basically i did a lot of dots that were red and so now i'm going to do a lot of dots that uh let's see what would be a good color uh there we go blue dots whoa very blue right but as i zoom out does that still look blue to you does it look like blue on yellow maybe if i hide the yellow what is that what would that color look like to you at a glance if you were to just guess the color of all those dots when you like what does that look like i would say it looks like purple right that would be my guess so let's let's have some fun here and do some purple ones next to it and see if uh, you can tell the difference. Doesn't it look like there's just more space between them? Right? That looks kind of it looks so similar, doesn't it? Let's let's put the yellow back. Does that not? I can almost get it to perfectly look like it blends. Does that not look like the same exact value, like the same exact color rather, right? And then you zoom in, it's like, oh no, they're different, but now they look very similar. That is how your eyes work. They fill in the holes that we create. So all of the brushes in my new brush set are based off of this principle where I'm focusing on making sure there's a nice different patterns of arrangement of gaps in the brush itself so that as I paint, I still leave some of the layer below to show through it. And so I'm going to demonstrate a few of those examples, a few of those brushes with my newest painting right here. I had to censor it because, you know, YouTube. But my most recent painting here, I'm extremely, extremely proud of. I think we're going to need to up the brightness for this one. What I love about it so much is all of the textures that I was able to get into it. It's got that like renaissance vibe, you know, with those nice oil paintings. I really wanted the lights to really pop and then the skin to fade and for you to see a lot of meticulous detail, but still adding my own aesthetic here with the line work and the very obvious little cross hatching dots right there. But as you can see here, I applied this same principle. You can see instead of blending this area into the yellow, really rich yellow and orangey tones here, I used a brush that was still brown, that same brown up there, 
but I brought it all the way. I brought it all the way down here and your mind blends it so that you don't have to do any of this extra work and get confused with the colors. And you can see I really took advantage of this. I wanted it to feel really, really bright and intense right here. And so I developed a few brushes for different types of sparkles that could overlay on each other and really look like you're getting this really beautiful glint and highlight on her face that gently fades down. And the best part about this is you don't have to use the brushes in this way to really, you know, this gives it a very clear certain style. You don't even really need to use it to this extreme level. You can build up your values and blend it and kind of change it around and then pick certain shapes that you want to make flat. And I'll demonstrate that later in a speed paint. But you can use this as just the fundamental of your shading and then make it as stylized as you want. All right, we're back in business here. Short little uh, commercial break there. So what I'm going to do is show you an example of a few brushes just to get my idea across because you got to show, you got to demonstrate to teach, to teach effectively, right? So I'm going to go here, I'm going to pop open a new layer and I'm going to show you one of my favorites. This is the Rake Shader Brush. And so it's got these gaps in between all of these lines as you can see right there, right? So this allows you to bring values up and down and back without having to worry about blending them. Because if I'm going to be honest, Procreate's blending engine is not up to par with most desktop softwares as of yet, right? Like Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint, it's much more predictable results from there. So you don't want to be relying on the smudge tool that much even though it can do some amazing things. So it's really nice to be able to learn to bring and mix values together that weren't able to otherwise. And so one really cool thing I'm gonna demonstrate here is this little orange, this patch of orange is inspiring me to make a cut there and show a kind of uh, indentation so we can curl up to that corner of her eye. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little, I like that color, but I want it to be a little bit brighter and so I'm going to take that and reduce my brush size and we're going to just begin to fade that out. And as I get to a harsher and harsher edge, I'm going to decrease my brush size so it becomes more and more pronounced. What I'm going to do here is I see that this is really nice and I can give it even more volume by taking this color and uh, bring it down a little bit darker so that we can show that it's raising up quite quickly after that cut for her tear duct path to go. And I can kind of widen that tear duct as I see fit here. It's not picking the right color. There we go. You can see I really beautifully fade that. And so now we've got that nice detail there where before it was a lot simpler. We've added a lot more detail and dimension. You can feel that you could kind of put your finger in that little pocket. You could feel, could get an idea of how it would wrap around this part of the nose. That's where these brushes become really, really powerful. And you can see all of these different places. I used it to meticulously go over and really carve these fingers out, right? To really carve out the lips and make them look translucent as I did with these streams here of the mystery liquid, uh, let's just call it syrup right for for uh, YouTube purposes. But yeah, you can see I just did it everywhere. I wanted it to become kind of something very clear and evident in this illustration. And here we have our boy Echo and I already went ahead and shaded this and I'll show you some of the bits and clips where I did that. All of these interesting colors and areas where I was able to start getting a little bit more of a really beautiful orange coming down here to really complement the rest of the skin. And when you're doing things like this, I highly recommend, pro tip by the way, go over here to the wrench canvas reference. You always wanna be using this. That way you can see what you're doing and like, oh, like I'm really being too light or I'm going way too crazy with this. And I can see in real time how far that orange is going in the overall look, but you can see how beautiful the skin looks like almost rainbow where there's all of these different colors. I was able to start building up some of these cooler colors there's a lot of colors that come up in, uh, you know, more darker skinned, melanin, melanated, uh, different types of 
uh, skin all around the world, you get these crazy colors that pop up. And even in really fair skinned individuals, you'll see all of these different blues and surprisingly bright yellows, depending on what the sun is doing as well. You can easily blend and like, oh, you can see, okay, I went a little bit too far, undo, paint over that and you can blend without needing to blend and so you can pick your colors much more effectively the only colors on your canvas are going to be the ones you picked and so you're going to have a much less likely chance to get stuck with super muddy colors that don't really do anything for you so immediately i'm thinking about how simple this color transition is and i'm wondering if i couldn't just have let's do another layer on top like uh and just make add it a little bit more of a punchier warm like a little peach here. All right. All right, let's uh, increase the size of this brush. I think normally I would do this with a little bit of a, what do you call those things? Like a, a blend mode. I'm making a course and I'm like, what do you call those things? <laughs> but the blend mode, I would usually be do this on add or something, but I want to show you my skills and show off and flex. So I'm just going to paint it but I'm also trying to teach, so I'm not gonna pick the easy way. And you can see I'm blending all of these really beautiful, more saturated, less saturated reds and oranges in here. And it's adding a very nice texture to her face, but also just adding that color in without having to worry about messing up what's underneath. To try to blend this out would be next to impossible. Like if you wanted to try to blend, look at that. Like I could make certain parts of her body look like they're glowing just by adding a really, really bright saturated red in there. Just a little bit. And you can see, right? That part looks like there's like really heated, right? Because of that subtle, subtle brightness, that shift in brightness that your eyes catch. It, it does a lot. And then you can color pick your own colors. I can begin to kind of separate that surface right there. I, I take advantage of this brush to just do a light first layer over it, right? All those holes, you see all of those? All of those holes contribute to the illustration. So you can just paint over one area, there's less holes, and you can suggest a surface change or something else you can do is you can just, if you do too much, use an eraser with the same type of brush. And then you can kind of figure out exactly where you want to erase to because that's how you do things in traditional and dry media right you don't just dab something there and it's on like with painting you have to know exactly what you want and slowly build up to it but because you're slowly building up to it you don't really have to know exactly 110 percent what you want right you can see i'm adding so much more dimension and interest to that like look at that look at look at that makeover <laughs> She looks like she has highlighter on now, like a little bit of bronzer mixed in and with just almost translucent pink skin. Like, look at that. That's geez. Look at that. Right. <laughs> and that's 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 not even the best part of the brush pack, because I'm about to blow your mind here. I have made a series of brushes that are amazing, just beyond beyond your imagination for galaxies and stars and just sparkles you can use this at multiple sizes star field you can get the colors to shift around you can change the opacity of them did i change this layer yet no we haven't even done the add Ooh. let's do another layer let's set it to color dodge I know somebody who loves color dodge. Ooh, look at that. And then let's go over here and do, let's do bloom. I'm giving you all my trade secrets right here. Look at what, what, look at that. Look at the power of layers and holes and filling in the holes. Look at all that. And then, you know, what's even cooler. I can, I can merge the, okay, maybe not. I'm just so inspired. This is, this is the joy of painting guys. And then I can erase that mask and add in these cool details. And all of a sudden I'm painting in braids. Yo, look at this. I'm painting in braids now. You can see them. Bruh, look at that. 
you could get in there and start defining the different forms on there. She's got like galaxy space braids, not space buns, space braid. I invented the new thing. It's everyone's going to be having space braids now. Look at that. Legendary. All right. <laughs> I, I am such a good salesman. You don't have to use Procreate to do this. You can just find, start with some halftone brushes. I know they're already default in Clip Studio Paint. Get some raked brushes. It's a very common type of brush. Add some texture into your texture file and mess around and you could come up with the same thing in any software. Or you could use Procreate and get my brushes. But I'll leave that decision up to you. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Keep drawing, stay positive, and ooh, that's the thunder. It's time for me to go. Goodbye.